so today I'm going to be wiring up my gauge cluster for my 55 Chevy truck and I've been <laughs> I've had it on the road for quite a while but I'm only now getting around to getting the gauges in it I've been driving it with the GPS as a speedometer but um, it's time to get some gauges in there it's not overheating or anything um, it's been running fine and doing everything it's supposed to be doing but uh, I, it would be much more responsible of me to have some gauges so I'm going to be wiring these up today and thought it might make sense to show you how I'm doing it. The thing to remember here is there's going to be two separate circuits. One circuit is going to be for the lights. So the lights each have a positive and negative. Um, some of them are the really small gauge. I think this is like a like a 22 gauge or something along that line. It probably says on the wire. I'm trying to find it. Um, it's a very small gauge. 20. Well, it's really, really small, and my eyes apparently are not that good. But it's uh, it's a really small gauge wire, and um, as you can see, and, but there's a there's a red, which is your hot. It's a 12 volt system, so you don't have. Uh, it's not like household wiring. It's just you have a, a hot and you have a ground. That's it. And so um, all the reds can be tied together because all of the reds. Uh, will be controlled by the same dimmer switch on the light switch of the truck. Uh, this is a Chevy truck and I'm running a Chevy, uh, a mid, it's a mid-80s Chevy switch that I bought brand new, um, but it all works directly to that. And so this, this red here, which is the lights, and then all of these can all be wired together to the same circuit. And then the other circuit is the power to the instruments, to the instrument gauges. So each of them has an I uh, for ignition. And so that's your other switchable 12 volt. So one 12 volt is hooked to the wire for the lights and it's controlled by the light switch. The other one is run directly to a switchable uh, power from the ignition. And so that's, that's it. Those are the two circuits I'm gonna be needing. The other thing though is all the grounds can be run together. So um, each of these instruments also has a ground switch, or excuse me, a ground terminal. And so the G terminal on the back is the ground. And so all the grounds can be wired together. It's a separate circuit, uh, again, 12 volt system. And so it's very simple. Uh, it can be grounded to anywhere. If you have a good wire under the dash that you know is a good ground, you can do that. If you need to ground to the firewall, um, you could run a ground all the way back to the battery, but probably you've got a good ground somewhere else. If all your other electricals are working, um, just find a common ground, no pun intended in this case, um, and you'll be good to go. So what I need to do, you can see I've already prepared my uh, negative wires here, my ground wires, and so I've got one lead. This is where I can twist those together. These are the wires for the gauges. And then I've got one that's cut really short here and that guy is going to go inside of the connector. So all of my connectors like that. And uh, so that's the next thing to do is I got to cut all those. So let's get started. I have here what I think is quite possibly the coolest tool uh, for working with stripping wires I've ever owned. Uh, I just think it's fantastic. You can pick these up from a number of different companies. A lot of different home centers have them. Pretty much every place has them. I think you're going to pay, I think I paid close to $30 for these, give or take. But, um, man, it just has saved me so much time and aggravation in stripping wire. So it's a, it's a two-part stripper. So when you squeeze it, it's all one action. So you squeeze and it works like that. But what it actually does is when I first start to squeeze, it closes the teeth like that, all right, and it stays closed through the whole action. And then once it goes, once I release it, they just completely click and release. The other thing though is on this side, there's a clamp. So it clamps the wire, and then as you continue to squeeze, it strips the wire. It's really, really slick. And I'd encourage you to pick up a set of these. I'll try and see if we can get this in focus here. So um, I'm running a 14 gauge wire. So I put it there. Uh, I need one that just a little shorter because this is going to go into the end. So you can see it clamps down on the wire. I'm just squeezing just a little bit. And now the cutting edge is around that. And as I cut down through the insulation and then it pulls 
the insulation right off. It is so slick. If you haven't found these yet, uh, you're welcome. Um, seriously, these are the coolest tool. Look how easy that is. Just one squeeze and the whole thing comes. So again, I want two different wire lengths here. So I want one short one that's going to go inside the insulated end. Pull that off and then flip it around. And this one's going to be longer because it's going to be twisted together. Boom. And you can see, you can go, once you've got figured out what you're doing, uh, it's really quick, it's really easy, and uh, you're going to love it. If you've never used these before, they are absolutely the bee's knees. They are just awesome. Nice little end. And again, we'll, we'll go a little longer than that. This big end. And that is it. Simple. Super sweet, really easy to use. Uh, I don't think you're going to have any trouble with it. I encourage you to pick yourself up a pair. I mean, I got nothing against the old style. These guys here, they do the job, but you got to hold on to it and try and pop it. And if you're dealing with really short wires, that can be a really trick. Or if you're in a tight space where you can't get your hand on there and you're afraid you're going to pull the wire out of a connector or something like that, this eliminates that completely because it holds on to the wire for you. Real sweet. All right, let's get to doing some more work. Again, uh, super easy doing these connectors. Just I twist them. You don't have to. Some guys like to leave them loose. I like to twist them because they go into the connector easier. Just slide that right in. Uh, you should see the wire starting to come out the end here. You can see that the wire is starting to come out. I don't want to push all the way through because I want to have insulate, uninsulated wire in touch with the conductor here. So, But I do want to see the end of that. That's the way I like it. And then you see that um, it's color coded. And so the same thing is true on these. You'll see that they are color coded. So the color of the piece that you're using, um, it tells you which end to crimp with. So I'm going to put the crimp right into that bulge right there. So you can see I'm going to turn this like that. Just crimp right around that. Squeeze. Give her a real good, hard, positive crunch. And it should hold really snug. You shouldn't be able to pull it. If it slops at all, then it's not tight enough and you need to squeeze it again. I usually give it a two-hand squish and I've got pretty pretty strong hands, but I always I just want to mash those puppies on there. I do not want those bad boys coming loose on me. So again, I twist, push it in, there's the end of it popping out, put it into the crusher here, Give it a squish, and it should be nice and firm. It should be real easy to stay put, and that's all you're after. And I uh, just repeat that with all these, and with all these, and just for my sake, I'm going to make the grounds dark colored and the um, hots like the red, just because. No reason. Might as well. Okay, so. Got all my hots wired up to go on the instruments. I've got all my grounds wired up to go on the instruments. Let's put it together. All right, not to bore you to death, but just to make sure that we're clear here. So um, all of my grounds are in the same location on each of the instruments. So it's the bottom middle is where the ground is located. And so I'm just gonna make sure those are all on. and I just slide them right down there. And see how I'm doing that. And I'm going to bring them all together, so I'm going to face them all the same direction. As ridiculous or anal or whatever as that may sound, I'm just going to do that. And uh, actually, I'm also going to make my life a little easier and put that wire side down. So that way the turning piece I'm going to put on top isn't going to grab a hold of it and try to rip it out. So I'll do that in each of these. There we go. So just running them all toward the center, just because, again, I'm going to wire them all together. So that's where each of those is going to go. And then put a little lock, locker dude on each of these. They've all got their own little, just a little bitey, whoop. It's just got a little bite to it there, just a little, little lock washer. Put that on each one of these guys. And then we'll spin the nut. Doo -doo. Camera's having trouble focusing that quick, but we'll just put a little nut on each one of those and move on from there.
I want to show you a close-up of something that uh, I like to do. Um, so I have this problem here, which is that the two uh, gauge wire lights, the lights for the w gauges uh, are really too short to effectively come together. They'll be stretched really tight, and I don't want them that tight. tight. So I'm going to put a little jumper wire in here. So I want to show you how I join larger wires to smaller wires, but I also use this a lot of times for joining any wires together, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but to make it a little easier, I'm just going to cover up all this extra stuff so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, so here's the here's the small wire. You can see that's, that's pretty small. Let's zoom in just a little bit. We'll tighten that shot up. So um, you can see that. What I do is I take my larger wire, and I think I earlier said that I'm using 14 gauge. This is 16 gauge wire, not 14. But uh, I just use a small jumper here, and I'm going to join it together. So I just split it in half. I just took the two halves and split them. And it twists together a whole lot more effectively that way. And I can make sure I have a much more positive connection. Like that. So I just twist them together. And then um, typically I'll bring the other wire over the top. Like this. So it just makes a really nice positive connection that way. Uh, it's really really snug, really tight. Um, also a lot of times I'll fold it back on top of itself like that and then I'll put tape over the whole thing. Now it is true you could if you were so inclined uh, you could use a, a physical connector for this. You could use like a crimp connector that would work. Um, you could also take the time to solder each of these. Uh, I'm not a, against soldering. I do a lot of soldering. But quite frankly, uh, these are going to be behind the dash. They're not going to get a lot of traffic. Or at least they certainly shouldn't. Shouldn't be a lot of activity going on back there. And um, they just need to be protected so they don't come unwound. And we are good to go, my friend. That is ready and it's a nice solid connection. Uh, the thing about twisting it and then twisting it back on top of itself is that if you pull it actually they actually tighten up and they really don't want to come apart. It works really well. Uh, it's kind of something I stumbled across. Um, occasionally I do have original ideas and this is one of them. Um, and I've been doing it for years and unless you're doing something like tail lights or something like that where it's going to be experience potentially a lot of water a lot of moisture, then that could be a problem with the connection. But for something like this, I just don't see it being a problem. I've never had any issues with it, and uh, we'll be good to go. So right now, this all looks like a royal mess. <laughs> and I think this is the reason that guys shy away from wiring stuff. Um, the connections typically are not that hard, especially on a 12-volt system. They're pretty straightforward. But just seeing all this and knowing where it all goes, but I went through the trouble, if you remember, of making all the reds one, you know, that's that's one circuit. Um, so all of the lights, these dudes, just these three right here, those are the lights for the gauges. Those are going to go together. That's my one circuit. And then my other reds here, these are the actual instruments and that's switchable by the ignition switch turning on and off that will be my second circuit and so it's really not that tricky it just looks messy at the moment uh, but what I'm gonna do is exactly what I had mentioned previously which is I take my two wires lay them on top of each other like that and then I can twist the left side and twist the right side and then uh, everything stays together really, really well. You can use wire nuts if you're so inclined. And sometimes if you're doing a large bundle, that's a really good idea. Um, but this is just a handful of wires. It's just, just four wires, and I don't think it's going to be a problem. So uh, let's get twisting. Okay, so I went ahead, I got everything connected, and then I zip-tied everything in place. And um, I suppose it might still look a little a little ratty, but everything's held in place. Nothing is on a bind. Nothing is pulled super tight. I mean, they're they're here, not you know loose enough to cause a problem. They're not ratty and flying all over the place. 
they're going to stay in place. They're not going to be abraded by any sharp edges. Everything is going to be good. Um, and then I've got three wires here, just three. Uh, the black is the ground, of course, and uh, there's no reason for me to label that one. It's the only black wire. It should be pretty easy. And I got two reds, and so I labeled both of those. This one says 12 volt switchable, so I know that one is going to connect to the switchable power. And then this one says dash lights, so again, I know it connects to the dash lights, obviously. Um, in case you're wondering, that's the speedometer connector. I would imagine you probably knew that. Um, and then just on the ends here, I just put the connectors I'm going to use just to help keep everything straight. I just got them sitting there. So when I go to wire in the dash, I can just set this in the seat next to me. I got the connectors ready to go. So I've only got three connections I still need to make. These three guys right here. So what I did is under the, under the dash, I found the three. And uh, the wiring kit that I use actually comes with everything marked. And I'm sure the uh, com camera's not seeing that. But it says fuel gauge. This one says temperature sender. See the writing right there. And then this one is the oil sending. And again, I'm sorry, I'm sure you can't see that, but that's what it says. So what I'll do is I'll get these uh, stripped and attached onto their pins on each of their, their respective gauges and then strip the other end and put a connector on. And then uh, at that point we're ready to put it in under the dash and it'll be Hopefully, everything will be functional and it will work perfectly. That's always the plan. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're inside the truck here, and uh, you can see the opening where the gauges are going to go. I've got all my wires here, and uh, if they're not the original wires in the wiring loom, then I've got them labeled. So this one says... Um, gauge lights on it but these are all original to the wiring loom and so they're all labeled fuel gauges uh, oil sending uh, temperature sending and then this is the switchable power to the all of the gauges themselves and then the black wire is my ground and so all I got to do strip the ends of these and go ahead then and I am ready to put the ends on crimp them and put it all together and again, I love this little connector, dude. I know I keep saying that. Are you tired of hearing it yet? Probably are. So all of those are done. And I've got my gauges sitting here next to me on the seat. And each one's got a lead attached to it. So uh, my switchable power, my ground, and my lights are all these blue ones. So, all right, so the gauge lights, I just twist that clean, and then I throw the connector on the ground. It's a very important step. Don't miss that step. All right, bring that together. Make sure I've got positive connection. Bring in my wire crimpers. So this is a blue end, so I use the, the blue tab there. Give it a good hard squeeze. Make sure it's connected. So you can see that none of this stuff is rocket science. I mean, uh, everything's color coded, or if it's not color coded, it's labeled. Um, you just gotta take the time to make sure you're keeping it straight, but other than that, it's just working through it. There's nothing about electrical that's all that hard. Uh, well, Turn signals can be a bugger, I'll give you that. But um, not for this stuff, this stuff's all very straightforward. Let me get my last connector here. Get them close enough to reach. I've cut the wire long enough to reach my connectors here, but not so long that they're gonna be hanging out all over the place inside the, uh, inside the dash. So we'll just start one at a time and connect them up. Make sure we got the right ones to the right ones. There's my ground. All right. Let's go 12 volt switchable right here. Connect them until you hear that click. They should click. Most connectors do. I suppose some cheap ones might not, but most of them will. And then the dash lights. Make sure that if there's any stray wires, I cut that one a little long and 
I want to make sure those stray wires go inside the shielding so they don't touch something they're not supposed to. We'll be popping fuses and trying to figure out why. And then these guys, if you remember, I said they're all color coded. So I don't even have to know which is which because I just connect pink to pink, light blue to light blue, and indigo to indigo. And we are good to go. We are ready to give it a try. Goodness gracious, you wouldn't think it'd be that hard to find the keys. Oh. All right, so let's see what we get here. Now, theoretically, I shouldn't need to have the key on in order for the lights to work. All right, I can see they're on. I don't know if you can see them come on. And the, yeah, they're there. I'll turn off my spotlight here. It'll be a little easier. So we've got dash lights. So let's turn those lights back on so you can see. And let's try the ignition on, and all the all the gauges come to life. So let's turn it back off and back on, and you see everything come back on. You can see the voltage goes up. Oh, that's not good news. It looks like I've only got. 11 volts. <laughs> that could be a problem. Now either that means I've got a voltage drop somewhere in the line, which is totally possible, or it means that the battery has run down. I haven't tried to start it in a couple of days, so that's also a possibility. But you can see, if we turn it off, we turn it back on, well, the gauges all come to life. Um, the fuel gauge is not connected to the tank, so it thinks it's got a full tank, but it don't. I promise. And then um, the water temp comes on, it's reading 100, it's about 90 degrees today, so that would be actually about right. And then uh, the oil pressure, hopefully that's going to work once I've got it connected up underneath the, the hood. Right now it's not connected up, so. But i got power, everything seems to be turning on and off, so I think we're in good shape. Alright, next step, getting our sensors hooked up.